in this video, I'm going to explain how to produce assembly drawing. We still use a draft module of Solid Edge to produce assembly drawing. The difference is that we bring in the assembly rather than the part when I uh, place the drawing. Okay, we start with an open template. We have to make sure the draft document selected. That's the template. Okay, that's the drawing we already made. So that's the template we need. Okay, and open. For the assembly drawing, we need to use a slightly larger paper. We'll just close this one first. And to currently we have an A4 paper. To change the paper size, we need to go to application button, click, and go to settings, click, go to setup, click. Here, make sure the background. We're going to change the background. Okay, we're not going to change the size. Not going to change the size here. We're going to change the background here. All right. Click on this drop down menu, and then we click on A3 sheet, and then we have click on OK. You can see the paper size become larger, and then click on fit. So that's our paper size for the assembly drawing. Once the paper size is selected, we can do the same way as we did use the join view wizard. Click on this one, and uh, make sure we select that one assembly document, not this one, not the top level, this one. Then we can have a pin assembly appear and click on open. Same way as before, but this time when we need to adjust the view properly, uh, we don't want this view, then we can actually use this uh, join view wizard, uh, then we can use this customer that allow us to adjust the view by using this common view. So if that's the view I want to do that adjust common view, you can do that as common view, that as common, common view. Once the view is selected, you close this one. And here you can select the front and, and the asymmetric. Right. Okay. In order for us to make sure the isometric is the right, I just select two, then we can, can delete up afterwards. So obviously this view is the scale is too large, we just reduce that to two to one. All right, and then I just click place the view. Now we can choose either this view or this view. I don't like this view, then I can just click and delete this view. Okay, then we can move this view around. Move this view a bit higher here. Uh, then we can have the uh, part list uh, placed in this area. To place part list, we need to go to this part list command, click. Then we go to the uh, place Oh, either this view or this view, you want to actually place the part list against. When we place the part list, we not just have the uh, view on it, we also need to actually uh, place a balloon. So we click this one, then you can see this appears. The box don't click now. We need to actually change quite a lot of things here. Okay. First, we need to actually make sure the blooms are all right. So, okay, click on the bloom. We use, we're not going to use the item count. Otherwise, you will have a, a bloom with a top part, with an item number, bottom part of the how many parts it counts. So, we just uncheck this box. Then we get to move to the column here. We need to remove this one. Click and delete column, click and delete column. We need to add two more things in. One is called project. OK. 
take it and move it up a bit. The other one is called material. Add and move up. The order from top to the bottom will appear on the part path list from left to the right. Remember, based on the British standard, all the text appears on the joint paper should be in uppercase capital. So we need to actually change this one here. Yeah. Item number. Uh, the project instead of project, we change it as the part name. Material is still material. Quantity is still quantity. Okay, so these are the changes for the uh, for the part list. Okay, if we click here and find the appropriate place, normally we just touch the corner here. You can see here the part list is still open, it's empty. So in order to actually unfill the part list, we just click this one, we can go back to here and click on the data. Right. We need to change the uh, this the fill this part, and then we just so highlight this one, right click, and allow cell overrides. Now we can actually add a part name. First one, as you can see here, right, is pin. Okay, number one. Second one is a bushing. Third one is a circling. Okay. In terms of materials, we need to do the same. Select materials, right click, allow overrides that we print steel. You can copy. Okay. So if we Go to OK. You can see part list open down. Right. At the same time, we need to actually add center lines. Just for this, the the uh, the OO assembly. You don't actually need to go to details to, to mark the center lines here. Right. Uh, for the dimensioning purpose, we need to actually give overall dimensions of this uh, uh, assembly, like the overall length and the height and the depth. So in this case, we do dimension from that point to that point. You can see this still appears here is because when I fill this one, this message is still left there. I okay, need to delete that one. In the last video, I mentioned that you need to delete that one when you actually have a new drawing. Okay, click 38. Then in terms of the overall height, probably we can do this way. Right. This is not a good figure. We need to actually uh, make sure this is a wrong figure. Otherwise, uh, it just uh, it not looks not nice. So to make a wrong figure, we need to click and click on this dimension. Then put the thirteen point. Seven and press enter. So one decimal. You will see the underscore here. You, if you right click this one and go to properties, then here is there's the uh, text uh, uh, 
here on the lines. It's, sim it's a symbol and terminator, and uh, and put a noun here, and that disappeared. So that is the over O height. You can drag it, and the the diameter. You can give the use the the external diameter in the in this direction. All right, and click. So that gives all directions. One more thing is you need to actually make sure these numbers are all go around clockwise. If something happened anti-clockwise, what you have to do, you have to actually select the number and change the number. Right. Once you change the number, you can update it, and then that would be in the correct on clockwise order. So we have one more thing to do, which is this part. We need to fill this box. To fill this box, as we explained before, we need to go to view, we need to access the background, and uh, but at the, this stage, we also need to actually make sure you actually click on it sheet three because here is the background of template A4 paper. This is the A3 paper. If you make the change here, you won't see a change on the joint paper, but you have to make change here so as it appears on the joint paper. The rest would be the same, for example, if I do the part name. Right. And if I do the reverse way, working at the background, you will see assembly as a part name appears here. You just finish the rest of it. That's it for this video.